Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the next instalment of the F2 season of RSF1. I'm Primus Gaming, and today is different. I'm not joined by Vettel. I'm actually joined by RSF1 Easton. Uh, hello, Easton. Welcome to F2, mate. How you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks. Yourself? Very, very good. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so we are aware, and in case any of you lot are confused, uh, the stream... Well, the stream has started before the lobby, they're just waiting on another driver by the looks of it, and then we shall be good to go. Um, in the meantime, Easton, I was just going to ask you, just as a little topic of conversation, um, what has you been your favourite like Monaco Grand Prix that you've watched? So, uh, you know, uh, real life, so including maybe 1996, you know, when they did the rewinds of Panis, or uh, Ricardo's win two years ago. What, what was your favourite? I would have to say... The 2019 months, I've not watched that much Monaco Grand Prix in my time because I'm still quite young. But I'd have to say that four way belt for the league last year around Monaco. Pretty good to watch. Yeah, it's also that was a very emotional Grand Prix back in the day um, due to the loss of F1 legend uh, Nicky Lauda. Uh, uh, I was quite sad then, but it was good to see the team support. Uh, as any of you have noticed, in case you're taking close looks at the cars, um, the 2020 Mercedes uh, car which still has the red uh, three-point star in the back of the car to uh, commemorate Nicky Lauda. Uh, and they put that on their uh, 2019 car as well. But uh, yeah, it's surprising that it's, not, it's been like an, a whole year actually since uh, Nicky Lauda passed away. Yeah, it's quite a long time. I was also a big fan of Nicky Lauda when he was helping out Mercedes, and yeah, it's been missed the past year. Oh, looks like everyone's now finally uh, getting ready to launch the session. Um, so, obviously, you, you race quite a bit with some of the lads here. Um, out of all the lot that you've seen, is there any particular favourite of yours? Um, favourite? Um, my wife's favourite, but I don't speak to a good few. Ronix is I speak to on a regular basis, same with we and sometimes one shot and grunt. So, I'll be having some sort of support for them for this race, as it's one of the hardest track in the calendar in my view. So it'll be quite challenging for them. Mm. And you can never really, um, you know, put a hat on someone really when it comes to Monaco because someone could have the best quality pace, you know, like their quality pace could be outstanding. But once you actually get into um, the race, it's a completely different ball game because, you know, you could be a professional, but nothing's going to stop you from clipping that wall or, uh, you know, someone even making contact with you. I mean, we've seen great pace from the likes of Moronix, uh, Shrimper as well. Have to give a shout out to Shrimper because actually leading the Spanish Grand Prix until a game bug uh, ruined Shrimper's chances of winning the Spanish Grand Prix. Um, he's quite good, so you have to keep an eye on it. But it's definitely between Shrimper, Moronix, and I have to say Grantastrophe, you know. Definitely sure people to not rule out. Right. To be honest, it's you can't really to... rule out you can't rule out anyone, especially in this type of track. The walls are so close together. So one mistake here on a wall would most likely need to come in for a new front wing. So it's anyone's game tonight, it's the survival of the fittest, I suppose, we'll say. Agreed. And um also I forgot to mention to you lot, because it's same as season one, two and it's happening in free. Um, it is a night race for the Monaco Grand Prix. Obviously, the weather conditions are still uh, at random, so we're not entirely sure on, um, you know, if it's going to be a wet race, if it's going to be a dry race. Um, top notch, hi all, let's go. Slipping sauce, hi. Uh, well, he said, Het, how are you? I'm pretty sure I mean, hey, uh, pretty good. You know, Easton, you're good? Yeah, I'm good. Looking forward to that. Nice. Oh, 
Something juicy I just saw in the chat. Braver container, rain at the end of the race. <laughs> just when you thought things couldn't get any more scary for the drivers trying to drive in this uh, track in dry conditions. Now they have to deal with um, <clears throat> they have to deal with a wet one, and as you can see, actually it took a while, like a good minute, for before anyone could come out of the pits because they were thinking extremely carefully on their strategy. Because uh, obviously, if it's going to be dry for the majority of the um, race, and then it's going to end wet, and uh, anyone who's running dry setups is going to suffer incredibly. Um, so it, everyone had to sort of take a minute there just to think on what they're actually going to do and I really like that about this track yeah I suppose it's not as bad the way around here because anyways you'll be running very high downforce because of the track so it's not the end of the world but it just adds that much more difficulty to actually again run the track on board with catastrophe in the Williams who's now just come out of the tunnel um, he's making his way around the track to begin his flying lap. RSF Uncle Chow, what's up? Good to see you. Um, would you like me to do the first on board or would you like the Honest Eastern? Uh, you can do the first one. Okie dokie, right now going through Raskas goes Gruntastrophe in the Williams as he goes through the Anthony Noggs and onto the straight and as he gets a very good run onto the DRS you've got to be careful going into Sandoval where you've got to really be careful not to cut too much of the curb nicely done he's doing very good Ravage careful clipping that wall as well now through the Massinet hugging on that a little bit of the back end kicking out as he's uh, chucking the car in through Casino and now into Mirabeau Hotel and then there's the hairpin Looking very good. A little bit backed off there on the power there as he's now going into Portier. And now through the tunnel he goes with some famous incidents here, uh, such as Michael Schumacher crashing within the tunnel. Now into the Novel Chicane. Got to keep it nice and tight on the entrance and the exit to maximize the full speed. Still looking good, staying in fifth gear into Tabak. Full power going through the Luchiron into Pintene. Still looking very good. Oh, he clips the wall. He's collected damage as he's going into Raskas. Gruntastrophe is going to feel that, especially with his setup. And now onto DRS. He's lost a little bit of downforce. And that's going to cost him a little bit there. But he sets a 1.10.7. I feel that would have been a very good uh, time. Maybe the, a little bit lower, maybe a 10.5. Obviously, losing a bit of that end plate did cost him a little bit of aero. Next is Brill Reapers and the Afatari filling in for Sturge this week through the Tabak corner. He's done a nice little slight lift to avoid the wall. Now up to the swimming pool, Shikane does that extremely nice. That's a right up against the wall now through Raskas. Well, we've been maybe seen the famous move down inside of there, we never know. Now down the street, it's going to be a 10 8 just slowing run. That's a very good time there by Brutal Reapers. Apparently, Robert says it's very laggy, but I've got the stream up on my phone and I'm not seeing any problems at the moment. There might have just been a tiny little spike there. Ooh. Muddy Biscuit, a 10-6. Very good work there by Muddy Biscuit in the Hass. Uh, also, we have to point out that Titan Prime is filling out, uh, sorry, filling in, sorry, for Iox. Um, Meanwhile, uh, we also have a uh, returning face. It's Verstappen. Uh, obviously, he left um, the league and has recently made a return as a reserve, and he's filling in for a Ferrari. Uh, it's a Shrimper's teammate, but um, welcome back, Verstappen. Hopefully, he'll do some good. Anyways, on board of RSF on Waiter as he's going through the Raskas into the final corner. DRS and uh, RSF1 waiter. What can he do? Oh, he said he was on a lap there, but then it just decided to say nah. So never mind to that. Oh, you gotta love the game, don't you, Easton? Yep. Oh, Titan Prime collects some damage there on his wing. 
Muddy Biscuit actually improves to go to a 110 dead. So very good work there from Muddy Biscuit. Shrimper is about to begin his flying lap, and I actually think that's ripping one shot yep. in the racing point. Pink Mercedes, 2019 Mercedes. Oh, that was close. That was very close. Uh, Concashifree said hi. I thought I'd give the crowd a piece of my wing to remember me by. <laughs> that was nothing with a little bit of showmanship. Just make sure you don't destroy the car. Otherwise, uh, not much of a race for the, for the fans. Uh, anyway, Stigeon. He now finally gets a lap in, crosses the line, and he gets a 1.10.8. So good work there by the Renault driver. Pops jumped and Bob with Stappen now, coming through the, the famous tunnel. Now down in Novel Chicane. Does that like straight as nailed that. Running just goes by Muddy Biscuit as well, through to back. Right up against the wall. Oh, he's nailed oh, that. Stappen's on one. Brutal Reaper, talk about ice rink. He's put in the comments. <laughs> the Stappen in the Ferrari. Oh, um, he backed off. He's going for a lap. Oh, the Stappen. Actually, no, the Stappen did get a lap in, but he almost made contact with the Haas coming out of the pits. He goes third fastest. Well, you can actually shrimp her. And the other Ferrari. Oh, we have contact with the wall there. Doesn't look like he's caused damage. Still got that momentum through Raskas. He's still looking very tidy. Yeah, he's still looking committed. It might not be the fastest, but he was at least committed to it. It's an 11 2. Trump up with some PL 11. That's a, that's a respectable time, to be honest. You know, it's. Very good work there by Trimper. Uh, we've got Titan Prime, who's now back out again on another flying lap. So I'll go on board with Titan Prime. Give him a little bit of the old uh, watch for live, the commentators. Hopefully, brings him some good luck, but some, some people are not really happy with that sometimes. But, uh, anyways, going over the line goes Titan Prime to begin his flying lap through Sandavot. Nicely cut in turn one. It's very risky not to have actually um, invalidated the lap there. Through Beau Ravage into the Massinet. Hugging it nice and close. It's very good. Oh. Now, Casino. Oh! Nasty. He's lost the end plate and he's backed off of the lap. Oh, well, Allen's went very deep in the Raskar as well. That's the bow one. With the Ferrari right up his chop. But that Ferrari's in big pulled into the pits. It's a 12-3 from Elemental. And now we've got Steerage. He's now on a lap. Ethan, please take it away with a um, Steerage. Steerage, Steerage, Steerage. Okay, so... Through turn one, Sandoval now up. Held for Bull Ravage. Hits through Massonet. Stays nice and tight there. Down the fourth now. Through Casino. Now down the famous Mirabal section. Rosberg tactics. Now in the Grand Hotel, Hairpin's going to keep it nice and very tight. Just up second for a bit of more traction. What are you? Now. Now come through the tunnel, is he going to stay nice and tight and Min minimise the distance to ducks? Then five gears in the Novel Chicane. Draw a chest to a bit more traction, now through to back. Down at the fourth there for a bit more rotation. Now coming up to the swimming pool chicane. Stays nice and tight. Steerage is looking very committed. Now in the ra grass cast. Have a look up there but for good measure. Now for Anton Gnomes. Now coming round the bend of the straight. It's a 10 flat from Steve. Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Impressive lap there from the McLaren driver Steerage. He's proved before that he's had the pace and he's actually. Um, the uh, Spanish Grand Prix winner 
and uh, very good work there by Steerage. He's looking pretty strong uh, today in terms of quality pace, but can he keep the momentum going throughout the entire qualifying session? That is the real big question. Uh, and actually, his teammate Breezy. Oh, pardon me. Oh, he hits the wall in the last corner just as he's about to begin a flying lap. Oh. That's the for Big Breezy. Oof there. Waiter invalidates in the mid section. Uh, looks like. Look, he's next. Oh, Lukey, Lukey. Yeah, there he is. He's actually going through the Novel Chicane. Very nicely done there. Through to back into Louis Chiron. Into Pincene. Oh, look at that cut. That was very nice. Oh, it does touch the wall a little bit. Into the Rascat section. A little bit wide on exit, but he gets a nice wide berth going into the last corner. Trying to make sure you don't hit that curve, well, hit that wall there on the left. It's so easy to. Lukey actually moves up into P4, which is a very respectable position. And a very yeah. good lap as well. Peyton turns back again. Um, Grunt's also back in oh, yeah. the track. Uh, the Stewart's win last week wasn't actually his um his first win he won in Zandervoort. So if he wins this week it's three number for him. There you go, Easton, take it away with Titan Prime. And um, Titan Prime. So go up the hill. The ball of Vagina come up to Massey, what's he gonna do? Take the double away the lane. Keep more speed now to the casino. Down the hill and to another boat. We have a lock up in the front right there, but I'll be okay now. And the Grand Hotel here up in. It's nice and tight with all the, like Stevie's did. Now the player does that nicely. Rev uh, right out now for the tunnel. Once they take the tunnel, it's basically the middle of the track, interestingly. Now down the Val Chicane. He's done that. He went down four gears, no hell. Now sit to back down at four gear for a bit of rotation. Leaves in six there for a bit of engine braking through. Swimpo does that nicely now and a little big lock up into Brass Cast now into Anthony Nones. That's a very nice to come across the line. It's going to be in an 11 7 puts in P17. We'll definitely need to go again. But it's a good back. Yeah, he looked like he thing. struggled. Right here, so now we've got RSF on Yuen in the other racing point, running plum last at the moment. He's making his way up through Beau Rivage. Um, Easton, it's, it's looking very close actually for Q1. Uh, who do you reckon, and I know it's not an easy question to ask, but who do you reckon might be out in Q1? Uh, because right now it looks like some people are struggling to actually get some times out due to either contact at the wall or I, invalidating by accident. I really couldn't tell you. It could be someone ends up retiring and dropping all the way down. Or it could be someone nails a lap and gets himself through in that bottom five. So we don't know as yet, but I saw him. Waverhoff's decent around here, same with Leon and Breezy, I've seen Breezy, Breezy race around here before and he's pretty quick. So let's hope he can get the lap in. Ewan in the racing point, struggling. He goes through Raskas. Last corner. Spare sparks there coming out of the bottom of the car. Round into the final straight. And it gets himself into P12. And... Oh, look he it. looks like he's on the cusp of being knocked out. Oh, yeah, and Luke, seven. he took top. Ooh, bit of end plate damage there. And we've got Breezy, as you said, mentioned before, in P20. Now just going for the Novel Chicane, about to begin his flying lap. Ooh, stages a 10th up in front. Now if Anthony knows what can he do, Stevage leaves in second. Wait, he's retired. Oh, he's crashed. No, he's not. Never mind that red. Oh, nine point eight from Stevage. 
Nice work there from Steerage. Oh, Meanwhile, stop, Oh, he crashed at the Novel chicane, and that might compromise oh, the Ferrari. Oh, he's hitting the wall wall. That's a slap and the Ferrari behind him. But he's got pressure being applied from Element Snow. Uh, Breezy. Oh, Breezy's getting no wing. He's got no wing. Oh, that oh, might be the end there. of Breezy's session. I was crashing around the hotel here, Ben. I guess. Oh no, as Breezy's shot of getting into Q2, Waiter might just make it through the skin of his teeth depending on how Shrimper can do, but Shrimper, he invalidated his first lap, he's actually got one last chance to do it. Flying lap, here oh, he goes. Who's, what's happened? Elton's is page one, to the casino. That he's might be element done. He's still going for it's a fair play to him. And Shrimp is still going for it in the Ferrari. He's definitely wanting redemption for the Barcelona, but the problem is, is can he keep? Can he keep this pace going? The Ferrari moving into the Nobel chicane. The P18, not enough. He's got one more run to do it. <laughs> Shrimper, runs. moment of truth. And the Ferrari does it! Shrimper moves We're to seven. Not. And that puts poor Waiter, who retired a little bit too preemptively, begins his Grand P16. It cost him massively, but Titan Prime just purpled the first sector. The rookie reserve driver in the house, how can he do? Yes, oh, good work! 13th fastest pushes one. He then goes up to 10th. Nice Which... work from XFR Peanut. Lewin's in danger now, because he's giving me one shot. Or I've just Went noticed it's a lose, lose, lose situation uh, for Racing Point because if one shot doesn't go faster than Ewan, one shot is out. One shot goes faster than Ewan, you. I wouldn't say in the stream's lagging, but I've got my oh, phone. Oh, oh yep, yeah, any little bit of lag, but it's fine. Oh, one shot doesn't go fast. Now it's in the pits. That's all true. Ah, oh, dear. Alright, bear up back. Just one second. Uh, Easton, I'll let you go over the top three. Okay, so, top three from that session. Um, so, in P1, is Lucky, 1, 2, 10, and the Alpha Tari with a 109.7. P2, Stevie's 97 in the Tangerine car with a 109.8. P3 is Muddy Biscuit 148 in the Haas with a 10 flat. Drivers are eliminated from this session though. P20 is Breezy who unfortunately crashed. P19, Mr. Elemental Snow 7. P18, Braver Container. P17, RSF on Beta. And then P16, Ripple and X one shot on the racing point. Rightio, um, I am back. Rightio, it, um, I'll monitor the stream. There probably will be uh, tiny bits of lag. If there is, unfortunately, can't really do anything about it, but if it gets unstable, um, I will uh, switch out just in case it gets like really, really bad, if you know what I mean. 
Yeah. yeah. So it looks like the first one is going to be Hudson in the red belt set of medium tires. So you're going to try them to turn it strategy maybe. Just try and get through in those set of mediums. A risky strategy being played by JJ, but you know, he, he's going for it. Rocking the Michael Schumacher helmet. Uh, I think it's uh, the final Benetton helmet he actually had. Right, hopefully that should be fine. Anyways, JJ Hudson going through the hairpin into Mirabeau. And uh, he's got quite a few cars behind him. They need to make sure they like make a good gap between each other. Otherwise that could conflict. This is interesting actually. JJ Hudson's only running out of mediums at the minute. Is he really? No, oh, yeah, he is. Everyone else is on the soft compound. Well, I'm thinking as they might throw the dummy here. Go full guns blazing at the start of the lap and then back off just before the line. I feel like that's what they're going to do. But some of them might just decide let's go a set of sauce for Q2 and try and pull away early. You never know what he's going to be trying to do. Anyways, um, East, take us on board with JJ. So Hudson, coming up board with Varge now, he's red bull, looking very nice under the lights. So Massini does that very nice of Casino Square. Even Bear stays nice and tight. Now down in the mirror bowl. Stays nice and tight, shifts up second for a bit more traction. I think third briefly before going down into the Grand Hotel hairpin. Justin first, just going into oh a bit of a wobble there through Poirier. Yeah. Bit of a lift off there. Oh no, he's backed off. Oh, that little wobble and That's looks like it's, it compromised his confidence to finish the lap. But the problem is, is now he's actually got a, a Ferrari behind him. That is Shrimper. You know, Shrimper passes along the slowing Red Bull. Fastest mid sector. Very good run there through Pintone. Rathcass. Shrimper goes round the last corner. And across he goes to complete his flying lap is a 1.11.7. Oh, and then Stigeon immediately, immediately tops the table with a 10.3. Gratastrophe, a 13.7. Do you remember the track? is now starting to slowly evolve as um, we go on and um, obviously the more se as the session goes the more rubber gets sort of laid into the track oh. which optimizes the grip and 9-9 nine, nine by Muddy Biscuit someone's looking pretty fast around here <laughs> I think Muddy's loving this track a lot it seems like Time Prime Nine's coming around the last corner and Muddy's teammate can he go anywhere near? Muddy, that's a good question. No, the man at Muggle, but it goes P4 in that set of mediums. Very good lap. On board with K Mag in the Renault. Stream's looking pretty good at the moment, stabilised, which is very, very good. However, ladies and gents, um, yeah, there will be a little bit of lag. Um, tomorrow I'm going to be buying a new Ethernet cable, but um, but something happened to my Ethernet cable. It broke, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to need a new one. Couldn't get because it's sort of a last moment thing that was discovered. So there will be the spot of like patch lag. But right now it's running at perfect quality, it's looking very very good. But just letting you know in advance if there is any patchy bits of lag. Unfortunately, just for today. Um, it will be there, but yeah, today should be the last time this ever happens, unfortunately, because the cable's broken. Um, I really can't do anything about that. Hudson, 10.4 on those Ooh. mediums, that's very good. Only little risky move, though, by JJ Hudson is that using those um, mediums oh. a second lap. Oh, steerage! Whoa. I was gonna say use it. I know the mediums won't be in full prime grip on the first lap because, as you know, Eastern, you know when you're on your flying lap with the softs when they've got like, no laps on them, 
They are at prime grip. The mediums, however, take at least like a lap and a half, maybe two laps, uh, depending on where you are, to really get the prime grip levels. So, uh, yeah, prime. It reminds me of. It reminds me of the old days, you know, prime and option tyres. Yeah. <laughs> Verstappen's back to his lap of just sort of memorable. Leon, Leon, I think that's how you say it's next. Um, I just call him Ewan. I always think the uh, L is silent. He's actually sustained right end plate damage. Oof. That's a, a nasty uh, thing there uh, for the racing point driver. You have to go back around and uh, try again. Meanwhile, for Stappen, you know, as, as, you, as you pointed out, Easton, uh, he will have to go back around. Um, actually, a little bit of a topic to talk about, Easton. Um, Mugello, the Grand Prix oh. that we just watched earlier. Um, what do you think of the track? Do you think it's suitable for Formula One? Like, yeah, it was very the amount of incidents that it had. People are questioning whether it is actually a viable track for Formula One cars. Well, I feel I think it's fine for F1. It was just people making their own mistakes, really. And Red Bull's causing massive pile-ups and crashes. So I think it's fine for an F1 track. Very fast flowing. A bit like Zambo, just a bit easier to overtake with the massive long straight star on the lap. So it's quite good. Oh, Connor Todd, haven't watched it yet. No teasers, please. Rightio, we'll mention no more of it. But... Um, we have um, more thrilling Grand Prix actually to come up yet. We've got Turkey, we've got the San Marino Grand Prix, or uh, as anyone else knows, it's Imola. Um, also, we've got um, we've also got the Portuguese Grand Prix as well. I think it's Porto Mayo. Um, I personally am looking forward to oh, Verstappen! Oh, he went through Pincene and he caught the curb too much and it actually snaps off his end plate. Oof. Massive effort, um, chat. Um, anyways, um, I really like Imola, so I'm, ex I'm excited for that. But Turkey, Turkey's got this one sector where it's just constant flat out lefts. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure you've seen the onboards of like, yeah. you know, Sebastian Vettel back in his Red Bull days and that looks like a killer, especially in these, um, modern F1 cars, you know, the amount of fatigue the drivers are going to feel just chucking a car through that. And I thought, um, I thought Mugello was quite um, taxing on the drivers, but I'm thinking how Turkey would be, and also Imola, because let's face it, some of them haven't seen uh, drivers come around there in anything from like 9 to like 13 years. Yeah. Oh. Alpha Tauri moves into third. Actually, Easton, it looks like yes. some of these medium runners might have judged it perfectly. I mean, Luki, a 10 3, and let's just face it, a medium tyre, a 10 3, that's a really good lap. Yeah, 100%. It's for Peanut. Yeah, he's also done it. Moronix is. Kind of on the cusp. Got to get this done. And there's five and a half minutes left. Oh, actually, I do have one serious question for you, Easton. Um, While well, we're in the qualifying still, the formation lap. Would you like the honours of doing the formation lap when I um, and I do the launch? I'd get up the formation lap. You can do the launch. Okie dokie, right. <laughs> because uh, I don't know if you're going to do anything special like um, Elements, uh, old uh, post office formation maps, or, or you pretty much emptied a lung trying to say Hass. No, it's nothing going to be amazingly special. Are you got awesome. more names for the cars though? Hmm? I've got some names for the cars I like to call them and the tyres, so that's one thing about the formation laps. And even the tyres and the cars. Different names. You lot are in for a treat tonight. Easton's going to mix it up with the formation laps. And, um, 
also four minutes and 35 seconds to go of the qualifying of Q2. Muddy Biscuit still leads with a 199, and Stygian follows behind in second with a 10 3. So the Renault's done a very good time there, Lukey in third. Uh, the, actually the fastest medium compound runner who will have the advantage when it comes to the pit stop strategy. Dude, ooh. ooh, what's happened? Veronix just went P5 there in his mediums. Just Oh, nice! Stevage and JJ Hudson. Very good black there from Veronix. Ewan in the racing point. He's pushing the car to its limits. He actually kept on having bumps of the wall. I'm surprised the game didn't invalidate uh, those little touches. Ewan onto the straight with the DRS. Goes oh. for them fastest. Ouch. He, he, go again. he has got the fuel. He has got the fuel. His fuel line on. Turn the battery off. Charge it as he goes on the track. Considering this kind of Grand Prix circuit, you can easily charge the battery. If he backs off now... He might just be able to get another lap out on those uh, medium tyres. Yeah, I definitely need that. Somebody's just jumped off and I missed it. Um, I was it? Because Mag was originally attending. Who have I missed? Um, was it Shrimp? Yeah, it was Shrimp who jumped off. In the ninth. And um, Eastern, so obviously um, everyone can tell. Um, oh, as you said earlier, you know you haven't been watching Formula One too much because obviously you're still quite young. You know you don't remember, um, don't watch much of the older stuff. Um, but in terms of league racing, if I'm correct in remembering, I think it was actually Monaco, which is one of your first actual um, podium finishes in in another league, wasn't it? It was like one of your first. Yeah, it was one of my first ones. And I raced alongside Bodder then. Yeah, you actually both got on the podium from what I remember, remember him saying. Um, is there any like particular favourite moment of like not just of RSF one? If like if you ha if it is in RSF one, that's pretty good. But in terms of your league racing career, like what's been your like favourite Grand Prix of all time? Like you know what what was like the most amazing Grand Prix that you did? Um, I, there's one I can remember doing, it was that same league I was racing against Gordon, but he wasn't racing this one, it was a full wet Germany race, I've led from start to finish from one thing by 25 seconds I think it was, something like that, it's been my best one. Yeah. I, um, I remember actually we raced together on a track um, in, a, in another league, um, actually in WOR actually I think I remember oh, yeah. Canada <laughs> I remember being plum last in my McLaren and I think you was actually you was in a racing point or a ha no you was in a Haas yeah and Rhombus was your teammate I think it was Rhombus and yeah I remember that race that was that was quite intense, but I think my favourite Grand Prix of all time, you know, in terms of my league racing career, uh, it, it would be Monza, but I'd say my first ever league race of all time was actually my favourite because it was my debut and I won it. And I was, and that was a very special day for me. So I actually have to say, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a good point. I mean, I would have won the Italian Grand Prix, but I had a drive-through penalty chucked me down to 17th place and I fought my way back through the grid up to second and was only like five seconds behind uh, the race leader and uh, actually season one F4 champion uh, Tidgesaurus uh, or formerly known as Full Send um, I think that was actually one of my best performances yet because of how much of a massive setback I had and then managed to claw my way back up that was actually quite a, a successful finish uh, what about you guys in the chat you know, what's been your favourite Grand Prix? You know, like, what was the best result that you had or your favourite? Or, you know, it doesn't have to be by pure button positions you made. Maybe it's the effort they put into it or just racing for someone. What has been your favourite Grand Prix? 
I've got another one, my best one was that Germany race, but my favourite one was actually that season, I'd rather take on F1 Hanoi. Really did enjoy it, oh. in fact. Yeah. Oh, sorry to interrupt. RSF1 Kachow subscribed with Prime, they subscribed for two months, congratulations Kachow. And, um, actually, uh, Germany is also one of my favourite races, because, um, for two seasons consecutively, I finished second in the race. Um, first one was against Tij Gasora's and McCracken. Uh, second one was versus Quaker Oats. So, I, I've, I've fond memories of the German Grand Prix. Oh, and Ewan! Oh, he oh. his way up to third! First half and I'm good with the book for the pets, and that's all she wrote. Grunt's not there, that's, that's a surprise. Well, that's it. That's been the Monaco Grand Prix. I'd like to apologise just a moment ago. I didn't scroll down for the Q1 results, so that is my bad. I didn't scroll down. Uh, clean Competitive Racing, or CCR, um, in abbreviation. Good evening. Nice to have you. But uh, that has been... Q2, so I'll go over the drivers eliminated and then Easton will go over the top three. So in 15th place is Brutal Reapers in the Alpha Tauri, followed by Verstappen in the Ferrari in 14th place. 13th is Grantastrophe in the Williams, 12th is XFR Peanut, and then sadly, just missing out, Verstappen's teammate, the other Ferrari, Shrimper, and he'll be starting in 11th place. In many, many races, that'll be a very good position to be in, but in terms of Monaco, it's it's still quite bad, but uh, well, not not bad, isn't that was, was a bad lap, but it's not not a good position you want to be in, especially on this kind of track. And uh, Easton, take it away, the top three. Yeah, so top three for this qualifying session was our Seth Van Kamag in his banana car with a 109.9. Then second was Muddy Biscuit. Those top two separated by four milliseconds in the Haas for Muddy Biscuit. Then you and out of nowhere. It's at P3 and he's tracing point. One minute, 10.2. Very nicely done by all the lads. And also, thank you very much for 32 viewers. It's very nice to see that we've uh, gone over the 30 mark once again. And uh, scroll down for the tables. But what's really interesting is that Top Notch, JJ, Moronix, Steerage and Lukey managed to pull it off of the medium tyres. So in terms of the... Um, the attrition of tyre life, uh, we've got to watch out for all of them, especially Moronix and Steerage. These two do not mess about when it comes to racing, and when, now that they've got the advantage on the harder compound tyre, oh, when it gets to those pit stops, they are going to be laughing, unless it's... Actually, no, it's not, even if it is an early safety car, they'd still benefit more. The softs would probably pit onto the hards, but... On this kind of track, you know, you kind of might, you know, you're kind of asking for a mountain out of a molehill, especially with hard tyres, and with rain due at the end. That's a different story as well. Yeah, I've also got a question for you, Premis. Top three prediction in order. Ah, that's that's a good question. Um, I'm gonna have to say, um, Moronix pole. A very close second from Steerage. And I actually think Lukey third. Mm. How about you? Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'm feeling I'm going to back Lukey. Paul. Then I'm going to say Steerage in second, but by a couple of hundreds. And then I reckon third's going to either be Muddy or Moran, but I'm going to back Muddy for third. That's a very good point, actually. Muddy's uh, pace is actually proven to be very good around here, quality-wise. Um, Sturridge says Lukey Pohl, so being unable to attend the Grand Prix, he's still, you know, going to cheer on um, Lukey, his teammate. So it's good to see you there, Sturridge. Chow, he says, first K-Mag, second Lukey, third Muddy. So um, Chow mostly agrees with you, except for he thinks K-Mag's going to take Pohl. And 
Lukey in the Alpha Tower. He's making his way around. Actually, we have to go on board of the McLaren of Steerage. He's actually going to be the first to begin his flying lap. So I'll pull up my track map. I've got notes for. So here we go. Round into the straight. Goes Steerage in the McLaren through into Sandovot. The Spanish Grand Prix race winner looking to make a third win to add on to his, uh, his little career sheet into the Massinet through into Casino Square. Oh, but lock up. Very nice going through Mirabeau into the lowest hairpin. Now, finally, in the last part of the Mirabeau section, into Portier. Still looking good. Now the tunnel. Good push. Good push. Now, the Nouvelle chicane. Nice and close to the wall. Slightly cut the chicane on entrance and a very close entrance out. Well, exit out, sorry. Very good. Now to back. Very close there to the wall. Into the Louis Chiron. Now Pincene. And he's still going very strong. Now Raskas. A little lock up on the right there, but he's still looking good. Now through the last corner, goes steer to the back end, kicking out that oversteer. Could have costed him a couple of attempts for the second. A 109 1! Wow. And just from the sounds of it, that stunned even you, Easton. That's quicker than what I've been doing. <laughs> steerage. Steerage is. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot to say, like, for anyone who's watching, you're an F1 driver. And that stunned even you. I mean, I'm F4, so that's, that's, that's going to be faster than me. Credit oh, very good no credit to you. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I actually think Steerage might have just secured himself pole. As if none of these guys can compare to Steerage's lap. Muddy Biscuit is a good second place at 109. Oh, K Mag! Here comes K Mag. Oh. Oh, got a little bit more talking in the chat now. Steerage OP, he's turned on ABS and traction control for this race so he can survive. Time Prime is going to win, to be honest. He is uh, ILR4 uh, champion. Uh, button says steerage for pole. Uh, Prost says that means nothing, anything, anything can happen. Lewis, B1234. Oh, that's not Summit League Racing. Oh, okay. You made a little bit of a mistake there. Um, however, P1 can be a little bit pointless in Monaco because, you know, you may be in front, clean air is good, no track position is key, but you're not invincible. You know, you're not going to be. Without mistakes, anyone could make a mistake in P1, especially in the race. You know, I've seen we've seen races. I'd be cool if you were in P1 and you were invincible. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty good. You know, hit the wall. Oh, that's all right. You know, got no broken I'm wing. P1. I get a warning. Yeah, yeah, I'm P1. Anyone hits the back of you? Oh, that's all right. You know, back of my car can take it. You can't. Um, actually, also, um, next year, Easton. Um, I don't know if they are going to add these to the game, but due to contract to the team, uh, the track, sorry, that they got on for this year. So, for example, Mugello, the Nürburgring, uh, which I'm happy, by the way, we've got the German Grand Prix back, but in, in the Nürburgring, not the Hockenheim Ring. Uh, I'm a little bit bummed about that because I do like the Hockenheim Ring. Um, anyways, yeah, the tracks that's returned, um, they're actually going to be keeping in the Get F1 calendar. Do you think we're going to get 27 races next year? I don't. I don't think that. Will happen. They might add its own little section, like classic tracks, maybe, or newer tracks. Just as a. Um... The contracts have been paid off though with the tracks, so uh... they are there. And we've got three Italian Grand Prix. That being uh, Emila, Mugello, and Monza. I would love to see a big calendar like that. I think it would be, it would be good to get some British ones. You know, yeah. Brands Hatch. Oh. Yeah, I'd be very good. Maybe Snetterton, that would be pretty cool. Oh, look it. Had a massive wobble. Ooh. 
That was close. It may be the best position, Prost, in terms of start. It can be, but it can also be the most pressurizing one because if the pack's still quite close to you when the pit window does come, you're going to get stuck in the pits due to the volume of cars. So being first in Monaco is good for the clean air in front, but it can also can also be a bit of a curse because you will be pressurized by everyone behind you. And a track like Monaco, the crown jewel of the calendar, that is, you know, as James Hunt would say, you know, you're going to need balls of steel around her. <laughs> yep, 100%. Hodgins, the next one on the left is red done. JJ Replacing. Hudson through the yeah, nice like he's, he's been replacing Rapids recently. I don't know if Rapids has dropped to reserve or not, because not in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, it's a shame because I I commentated uh, a lot with um, you know watching over rapid sprays. Uh, oh JJ cutted too much of the Nobel chicane and that's all she wrote for that, Matt. But he's going Stevie for Juice. it still, even though <laughs> he's invalid. Oh, Stevie is three tenths down. I think he's just going to bolt to the end of this lap. Unless he can have a very last character. Might make it back. Could he stun you once again? Nah, he's, he's, he's made a mistake and he's he's going to call it a, um, well, call it a day for that lap. Moronix is actually on his as well. Um... What? Yeah, actually, I should have just lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, actually, no, I was going to say, it's a steerage um, already blew you away once with uh, that 1091. Do you think if he goes back, if he actually goes back out on the track, do you think he can do it again? Because look at Lukey. Lukey and Muddy did 1094s and 1095, which is good. Do you reckon steerage could maybe get into the eights? Well, I've seen his time trial thing on NT, so I can eight point six or something. So you know, I know he's got her in his locker. Just if he can do it on the day. Oh! I reckon I might, if he looks to get into the heat, it would be a very high year, I reckon. 8.9 maybe. I would say. Moronix had that little moment there, but he persevered. Oh, it did pay off. Titan Prime in the house, filling in for Iox today. Into the Raskas, locked up, going there into that corner. Now into the final corner he goes. Titan Prime in the house. Where can he put himself for Q3? Stays 10th fastest with two and a half minutes to go. And currently the order is steerage in first. Top notch actually goes seventh fastest. Uh, good point there, Ethan. Um, Buddy Biscuit actually looks like he's about to begin his flying lap once again. Um, but as the order stands, Steerage first, Lukey second, Biscuit third, K Mag fourth, Moronix fifth, UN sixth, Top Notch seventh, Stitchin eighth, JJ ninth, and then Titan Prime rounds off the grid. But we're on board now with Muddy Biscuit in the Hass and Easton. Um, Easton, take it away with Muddy actually. Let's give him a little yep. bit of screen time. So just come for the casino section, it's very tight. 15, 100th up for the first set. And now from Mirror, we're down in the Grand Hotel here, pin. Bit of a lock up, just down at first for a bit of rotation. Now for this tricky corner, easy to invalidate. He's in second, short just an exit to get better traction. Now, Crown for the famous tunnel stays very tight there to be able to minimise the distance now in the Novel Chicane. Does that nice and right over the curb. Now come up to the famous to back corner. Does that nice he's a tenth up muddy is. There's through this car, oh he's done that nice and no wobble one exit now in rad kicks. Lock up on the front right. Now Anthony Gnomes has done that very nicely. He's gonna come across that very shortly. It's a nine three oh! muddy. <laughs> Fastest third sector! That's very nicely done, Easton, by the way. Well done. Um, going into the last minute of Q3, it's the moment where it all matters. Can Steerage hold on to his pole time of a 1 minute 9.1? Money Biscuit, a very good lap there, is a close second of a 1 minute 3. 
That's a very good position though. Second place is actually also a good starting position. Ewan is in the racing point and he's looking to get a good lap in. Meanwhile, it looks like we've got a pitting car. That's a Renault of Stygian. The Stygian and Moronix are good where they are. They've retired from the session. Oh, Hudson the pit. Sorry, JJ Hudson in the Red Bull. Stays ninth fastest. That's Meanwhile, RSF1 Ewan in the racing point has backed off. He is staying where he is. Meanwhile, we've got some more cars following him right behind because we've got Muddy Biscuit and we've got oh a little bit of the back end kicking out there for that car. Muddy Biscuit around the last corner. DRS active. Can Muddy Biscuit make the difference going down the straight? He just misses out on the pole. Steerage backs off. Okay, Muddy's a 700 step. Around the last corner goes K-Mag in the Renault. Can he make the difference and get up into the top three? This is, could be his chance. He narrowly oh, misses out. And he keeps fourth. And now the last car of all is Lukey. And Lukey looks like he's actually on a really good lap. We've actually got a retired car of JJ Ooh. Hudson on the Novell chicane. So he's retired on the track. He crashed, but um, I don't think I saw anything about oh, that. And Lukey invalidates. Last moment pushing through Pintene. That's all she wrote for that session. Yes. Oh no. But JJ Hudson he retired there. Actually, Ethan, could you quickly check if that was um, a terminal, um, you know, terminal damage? Okay. Ah, uh, no, we can't. I can. Check. Oh yeah, because you still got the race director on your end, haven't you? Yeah. Um. If that's terminal damage or if that was in fact a on track retirement. Uh, while Easton does that, I'm going to go over the top 10 for the start of the race, which is Titan Prime in 10th place in the Haas, JJ Hudson 9th in the Red Bull, uh, Top Notch 8th, Ewan 7th, uh, Stygian 6th, Moronix 5th, which is quite surprising. I've not seen Moronix uh, come out of the top, five, uh, top 3, uh, K Mag 4th, Lukey 3rd. Money Biscuit second and Steerage. The race winner in Barcelona starts top of the table in Monaco. I'll be two seconds. I'm going to go and get a drink quickly. All right, mate. I'll hold down the fort. And again, ladies and gentlemen, uh, due to a broken Ethernet cable, if you do see tiny little patches of lag, I am really sorry. There is absolutely nothing that can be done. By the looks of it, it's still been pretty nice and clean, which I'm hoping it'll stay. But if it does happen, and it looks like it's been very uncommon, if it does, I'm sorry. It'll have to be just for today where you've got to persevere through it. And I'll try my best to watch out for it and uh, let you know what happened and what you missed uh, during that little spike. But should be all right. Uh, anyways, if you're wondering why uh, we haven't gotten going yet, this is the transition period. This is where drivers uh, are waiting for the lobby host, which is RS Moronix, uh, to ready up before they can begin. Uh, during this time, the drivers can go over their strategies and also their setups. Uh, due to Park Fermé being enabled, the drivers can only minorly alter the setup, um, which is like a little bit of front wing and maybe a tiny bit of pressures and brake bias. But that is pretty much about it. But they can go over if you qualified uh, 11th or lower uh, you can go over your tyre strategy choose your starting tyre I'm pretty sure we will see a hard tyre and also your fuel I preferably uh, think on a track like Monaco you might want to under fuel because if there's a safety car at least you're not overloaded in terms of uh, the fuel load I have also a bit of a tongue oh welcome back Easton sound like you got yourself something to eat and a drink there Yep, get some Oreos. Ah, oh. glass of water. Oh. Well, I'm I'm not jealous on the water part because I can easily just go get out, but I am very jealous <laughs> on the Oreos. Uh, and yeah, uh, I would have that kind of stuff here, but uh, they don't last. <laughs> you know, someone will just like you know, you buy something, you put it in the fridge or in the cupboard, and then someone's like, "Oh yeah, cheers, I'll have that." It's like, yeah, thanks. I totally just didn't pay for that with my own money. Cheers. That's why I like to hide my stuff. So like, if I if I buy like uh oh Christ, what is it? What is it? San Pellegrino? Not a sponsor by the way for these uh for these brands. Um San Pellegrino is uh they make really nice um like fizzy blood orange, uh lemonade, grapefruit, 
Really good. Recommend it. Um, if I put them in the fridge, they're gone. Especially blood orange. Everyone loves that flavour. Yeah. It's like, it's like a little tad, like, bitterness. But it's, like, really good. And yes, as you can tell, everyone, I'm thirsty. <laughs> but I don't have any of the drinks, so I can't, I can't go get myself one. All right. Uh, still waiting on the lobby host. Still got 30 viewers. Just a moment, everyone. Persevere with us. Uh, the moment Moronix gives the go-ahead, uh, we shall rock and roll. Right to you. Um, hmm. There you go. Moronix is ready. Eastern, before we get properly going, um, a best debate on... Who is the best F1 driver of history? Who do you think's the best, current or former? Formula One champions or drivers, who do you think has been the best driver? Could be through pure influence, skill, wins. Wh wh who's yours? Um, well, I don't know. Just our driver, I would say. I think I'll say that. Our driver. Couldn't name Fair play. Any. I'm going to have to say Ayrton Senna because the man was like a real hero on the track as well, especially with Eric Comas who crashed back in Spa and he, he risked getting hurt to save him. Anyways, before we carry on with that, we'll go over the formation lap. Uh, please, give us your special formation lap that you, uh, you said you were going to brew us. <laughs> yep, so in P20, we've got the Tangerine car, our Breezy 7 to 7 2, on the Moldy Grape tyres. And P19 is the Elemental one. Elemental 7 and these Red Bull on some moldy great tires. P18 is Brave Rocket and these Mercedes on some banana tires. P17 is the toothpaste car of R7 Waiter on some banana tires and P17. <coughs> and P16 is Ripple and X one shot and the Tracing Point 2019 Mercedes on some banana tires. P15 is the Alpha Tabby. Is that Pierre Gats? I don't know. On some banana tires. The returning RSF1 for Stappen, not just for Stappen away, sorry, and a strawberry car on some banana tires. P13 is the second base car of Grunt on banana tires. P12 is the Exapark Peanut and his Alpha Romeo on some banana tires. P11 is the strawberry car of Shrimper84. On banana tires and they top him a bit tight in prime nine in the Haas on soft tires or bin uh, strawberry sorry. P9 is GJ Hudson 11 and the Red Bull on banana tires. P8 is R Seth one notch and the other Alpha Women on some banana tires. P7 is R Seth one Ewan on the tracing point on strawberry tires. P6 is Stidgen and the banana car on strawberry tires. P5 is RS Moronix and the Mercedes on banana tires. P4 is RSF on K Mag and. Uh, oh, sounds like the mic disconnected there. Unfortunately, this uh, formation lap got cut short, but well, it looks like we're going to get the launch in Monaco. And it's lights out the way we go. It looks like steerage gets a bit of a poor run going into turn one. It looks like some ghostings happen. And Moronix is now uh, challenging Alpha Tauri in second. It looks like the hat of the Money Biscuit is into third. So it's up until the Alpha Tauri is ghosting. That's weird. Anyways, going through into the Casino Square, it goes. Steerage, then Luki, then Muddy Biscuit, then Moronix, then K Mag and Stigeon. Oh, a little bit of a lockup, but it's a very clean first lap. I'm very impressed with these lads in what they've been doing. Brutal Reaper's been challenged by XFR Peanut going oh, into Mirabo. Oh, the oh, pile up! Everyone hitting each other, going into the hairpin. And a safety car has been deployed. Elephant Snow receives a five second time penalty, so it's XFR Peanut. Stappen's facing back into the hairpin. So I don't know what's happened there, but maybe there's been contact which spun Verstappen around causing the pile up, maybe. Oh, no wing as well. 
He has to limp back and quickly get those new uh, new wings on and the tyres. A five second time penalty had just been given to someone, for, uh, I think it was Titan Prime, for making contact with Grantastrophe. That's a five second time penalty. Meanwhile, the safety car is now making its way up through Beau Rivage. And that has been the opening lap. I was going to say looking very nice and clean, but then at the moment we get into the lowest hairpin, that it all changes. The whole field just have from ninth down once is all going to put for damage. And the Apart best part is, is if you are, if you are breezy, you are in for a beautiful treat. Because look at breezy jumping the pack on hard tires into ninth place. He somehow got away with no damage then as well. This man here has managed to avoid calamity on his half compound tyre. And even though the medium runners is doing much better than the softwood um, coming into the mid stages of the race, Breezy's actually going to be the one laughing if he can keep his momentum going. Yeah. Right to you, uh. Didn't you, what happened there, by the way? You was about to finish the formation lap and then I heard your microphone uh, disconnect. I don't know, I just cut off for some reason. It sounded like you dropped it or something, you know, like just just like a boom, boom, boom and suddenly you just stops like, oh, um, uh, race launch. <laughs> and just uh, there you go, so, yeah, it's, 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 a bit, it's a bit of a shame. I was, I was enjoying that, you know, the banana tyres, the strawberry tyre. RSF on Vettel, Evening, Primus and Easton. Welcome, Vettel. Uh, Vettel says Easton, German. go bed. <laughs> one one Nick, I'll jump with Vettel. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, are you going to take that challenge, Vettel, after the race? 1v1 Belgium, we just said? Well, we're going to take that's one so far. Oh, and also, you're going to have to give credit to Breezy where it's due. Uh, obviously, with the tyres um, you know, being in P9 now with hards, which is still very good, but he, he actually went last place after the start to there into ninth and he's up 11 11 positions verstappen is now going uh, to pass eastern not eastern up <laughs> element yeah you're not in the race <laughs> um, elements decided to go for actually it's element serving penalty no i've always done there he's he obviously starting the hard tire so he's decided that he's going to put on a new set of tyres and go back on the low charging to them as long as he possibly can. And the race, Actually, maybe try to take them to the race, it. maybe. Yeah. So it's a very smart call. Tires. Yeah, it's a very it's smart due, call. And he, and he underfueled the car as well. Only issue is, yes, he's now got the perfect strategy. He's last, but he's, he's catching back up to the pack now that the uh, safety car is... Um, holding everyone up um, the question is, is like I said for um, Breezy they could be looking good if they can keep the momentum going oh safety cars then but, oh it's going to be good going back on with the race leader steerage do you remember everyone you can't pass a single car until the leading car passes the finish line and that's when green flag racing is a go and rounding the last corner goes Steerage. He puts his foot down and it's now lights out. Well, not lights out, but it's re-beginning of the Monaco Grand Prix. Steerage leading of Luki following behind a Money Biscuit set uh, third. Marek's fourth came back fifth stitch and six. It looks like Top Notch is uh, keeping a good seventh place though. JJ Hudson eighth, Breezy ninth, and Gantashri tenth. It looks like, unfortunately, one shots for Stappen and Element Snow are falling quite behind the pack. They didn't have quite enough time to catch up. It looks like Steerage is just locking up. They're going into Mirabeau following Luki, who's actually pressurizing the McLaren. He's staying quite close. It's a free horse battle for the lead, but the medium tyre runner in the lead is actually doing pretty well, but he's still got that pressure being applied by Luki behind him. Uh, Vettel says, how the hell is everyone still in this race? Because everyone's been very, very good. Oh, Braver Container collects a three-second time penalty for cutting corners. Come on, Braver. It's a game bug. It says Top Notch is a lap down on, on Stygian. 
Wouldn't be the strange just says it's seven tons paint. Uh, it's just a bug on my end, sadly. But it is now the fifth lap of the Grand Prix as steerage crosses the line. And the question is, is how soon is this rain going to arrive? It's due. Braver Container says rain is coming. It's a matter of when. But the skies are looking quite clear. Brutal Reaper actually now pits in the Alpha Tauri as he collected damage. He did. New I front did. wing being applied. Medium tyres. This man's got a lot of work ahead of him. Yeah, but I need to just try and keep out the walls and then we could be on for a good race. And the battles are not going to be quite like what you lot are used to, considering the tightness of this track. Battles uh, for position will be much more difficult in terms of the uh, pits is where it's really going to happen, or the main start-finish track. Yes, that's one of the tracks. This is the point to get your track to spot on. Try and find a gap within all the traffic to get some clean air push on. This is a very important race. Because if Steve wants to, he needs to keep an eye on looking muddy behind. But speaking of muddy, we could have a look. Oh, okay. yeah. This, this Delta is looking quite uh, close, I can see there. I was watching over top watch battling there with Stygian. Muddy Biscuit wants a look. I think he's going to save it though for the tunnel. He's definitely very racy. The Haas has this pace. Oh, Lukey catches the wall there a little bit. No damage sustained, but still, that's a very scary moment because that's going to cost him a little bit of momentum and confidence. And that's going to give Muddy Biscuit that chance to get closer. And Braver Container collects another three second time penalty for cutting corners. He made this jump ball run there through the chicane, and he's lost a little bit of pace. Well, it seems like Steve is just off in the distance waving goodbye at the minute. <gasps> and then you see... Lukey just... Lukey got damage! Big if. Massive if. Steerage, the uh, previous Barcelona race leader, back in uh, the previous race uh, got disqualified due to multiple warnings from the safety car uh, when he didn't actually get any notification that a safety car had come out is in 12th place and just collected his first penalty of the session. So a long race though. Muddy's all over the back of Lucky. Lucky's really struggling for URS at this stage already. He's burnt out too early and that's how Steven just, just waltzed off into the distance. Being stuck behind Luki is actually not doing Muddy any favours because Muddy's now got Moronix, k -Mag, and Stygian bearing down. Chicane. Luki does get the better run though. Looks like Luki is a little bit more uh, preferred in the uh, Novel Chicane, but he's going to lack the downforce going through. Uh, going through Pincene and Raskas. Oh, he's right there. Stitcher receives a free second time penalty for multiple warnings. We're going to see a load of penalties uh, at the end of this race. Stitcher's in. Just for a new wing. Just for a new wing. Oh! Close racing for third. Muddy wants this. He's looking to get past Luki. Luki's holding off the Haas. This Haas must be frustrated because it's soft to dying and he's getting the Trimper. dirty air. Trimper just made the move on. You and the Alpha P10. Red, red no down the inside of turn one. Looks like you was not ready for that. Oh, and the Haas is getting a little look on you and that's Titan Prime. Ooh. Titan's got XFR Peanut right behind him on those hards and Waiter. Waiter actually caught up to the uh, to the action here. Rip and one shot, collect a three second time penalty. Yun has damage. Oh no! Oh, and he squeezed the Haas in the wall! You're not seeing a repeat. Oh, there's a spun Williams! 
It's catastrophe. He's cut. He's cut the inside wall. The no push came. This time down to it. Passes. Passes you in. Oh, Bravers destroyed the wall. Oh no! Is that a safety car? No, it just yeah, that's fine. Luckily, he's hit the wall that hard. This whole one's came off. That's a big issue in the chat. Oh, Stitchin just gets past. Bad luck there for the Mercedes going into the pits, but immediately to be the first to put on new tyres. Oh, Bravers crashed in a pelly. Oh, no, he's, he's retired. He's not crashed. He, he retired in the pits. Oh. I agree. Our first retirement of the day is Braver Container. Ewan is actually uh, bunching up the pack behind him. Gruntashafi is eager to get past him. Just tapping Grunt, uh, the bit of a spin there. And it cost him serious positions where he stayed in front of Pina and his teammate Waiter. Meanwhile, Muddy Biscuit still can't get past Luki, and he will soon have to pit. See, he just walks off into the difference. He almost has the fucking straight in his favour. And now here comes Muddy. He's going to like run your side. Someone's lit. He's crashed. What's oh, Ewan? He's crashed. It's one thing. That's a virtual safety car, that's a second safety car uh, that has been deployed, not the proper one, but one normal, one virtual, and that has been a, a what looks like a catastrophic accident there uh, at the chicane, and yeah, that is one Mercedes and one Racing Point out, and bad day for Racing Point because ripping one shot is in plum last. I'll tell you what, he might have under at VSC and he's going to take those hards till the rain. And he's got some clean air in front of him. So it's about. Oh, I see, I just hit the ball. Oh, no. He was looking good as well. Oh, and he's getting that wing. That has just ruined K Mag's opportunity of finishing on those tyres. He, he could persevere and go on to the end. But he's going to lose pace because of the lack of downfalls. Especially that damaged wing. Yeah. A good opportunity for him to maybe jump out, try and get ahead of Lucky and Muddy. They obviously had the VFC advantage. But jumping back on and Muddy, what's he like? From the back of Lucky, he's still not close enough. The pit window is now open uh, for the soft compound runners, which is of Muddy Biscuit and Shrimper, the only soft runners left of the session. Uh, for the brief moment. Meanwhile, the medium tyre runners, uh, Steerage has left the pack. He's uh, comfortably leading in first place. Meanwhile, Luki is in second with the damage. He is definitely going to suffer once they get to the pits, but Muddy Biscuit is still pressuring Luki. But that damage has done Steerage wonders because he can just he can just comfortably take his time up the front. If they get closer, he can just put his foot down. Yeah, bitch. I don't know whether the net, well I know the pit one came with, with a 2.6 pit stops, 22.2 seconds, but I don't know what the time loss is that, is from that. So it doesn't quite have a pit stop over looking muddy yet. Stigeon, we're going board of Stigeon, he's pressuring the Stappen in the Ferrari. Are you going to make the move at the Novel Chicane? Like Max Verstappen tried to do on Lewis Hamilton back before in 2019. No, he cannot. He backs off for the moment and he's not going to make the move into back. That'd be a very, very risky corner there. But Stitchin holds on through Pintene. All over the gearbox of the Scuderia. Now through Ratkas. He wants this. You can, you can see this Renault wants this move done. Oh, Verstappen oh, oh, oh. trying massively. They both get a little bit of kick of oversteer. Bit of the gearbox glitch there with Stigin. Not quite yet. Into Sando Bot, into Beauvage. Can he get past this Ferrari? He wants to try and make the move that Stigin did, but he can't do it as of yet. He has to back off and wait for the next moment. Ten point four seconds separate the race leader and Luki going to check the gap to leader. 
sixth. So the only person that could jump, or the last person to jump steerage when he does pit, if it's not a safety car, is JJ Hudson. Breezy is 24.8 seconds behind the race leader. Money's in the pits. Oh. He's doing it. Fast. Uh, ripping one shot. A three second time penalty for cutting corners. So medium tires are going to go on for Muddy. We'll take them to the ring easily. And we're well come out well and get some fresh air. Breezy up to sick from the hards. Oh, oh we ready. got an incident in Raskas. A stitching. Ellen. Ellen's went around. He's going to flex one in the pit lane. We are also in there for a new wing. Element looks like he's going to keep going. Good on him. Well, there's a big pile up there. And look at Stigeon. He wants to get past K Mag. Oh, there you go. Team orders there. K Mag waiting for the perfect opportunity to let his teammate go. And uh, yeah. very nicely done there. Uh, good teamwork there. JJ Hudson on board of him. Challenging top notch for fourth place. Top notch also staying quite closely with RS Moronics. Oh, yes. catastrophe. Oh, oh Lukey! Oh, looks like that, right? Is this for a new wing as well? Yeah, new wing goes on. Oh, they yeah, have some damage traffic. And he's going to look back right outside of the final corner. What a move. And put in Peanut. So Peanut's got damage though. He's got a broken end on it. That move might have compromised Peanut. There might have been contact maybe. Mm, I don't think there was because there was just about enough room given from Muddy for both cars to make it through. The Breezy's Another got a big collected by Brutal Reapers. Look at Shrimper, staying on those softs for 12 laps. Not going to be good, I imagine. Oh, we got a car off. That's XFR Peanut on the lowest hairpin. However, he got going pretty quickly, so no safety car or virtual. But he's got, I'd say, that's orange damage on both ends. He's still got. Oh, there you go. There's the wind drop. A good for Peanut. Oh my god! Stigeon wants this. He's trying to get past Verstappen. Shrimper's on the pets. Oh, Shrimper pushed out. He pushed out the softs quite long actually. Very good work from him. Minimises the amount of time that he's probably going to lose uh, going into the pits. Uh, you know, it uh, depends on what time he's going on. He's going to warn mediums. Oh my I god, think... Grunt on Titan. Oh, 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 Grunt, here's the wall! He won't be happy at that. Oh, he had the pressure of trying to catch up to Titan and holding off Muddy Biscuit. But now... Here's the question, Easton, with Haas. Is it going to be team orders like the Renault did, or are they going to fight for this position? I don't, I'm not sure, because it hasn't been used to make some good in Iowa's. It's a reserve driver, so I don't think they've planned anything. Oh yeah, there you go. Run. There's the move being done. And I'm very nicely done, actually. That's, that's minimalised the amount of time lost by Titan for uh, letting Muddy go. Um, and that's very good. Uh, that's very good respect there. It's Titan being on 13 lap old uh, medium tyres, oh, and it's a safety car. Oh, and that's oh, Peanut. Man. He crashed in the Casino Square. Oh, it's very interesting. Man. That's going to okay, really help is... out Veronics and Top Notch as well. Yeah, it's. Well, they got to a heat to the Delta. Steerage, however. Oh, God, watch out going up the hill, by the way, because the safety car is parked there. I need to see us. I tell you what, Breeze is a There's the safety car. It's parked up Beau Rivage. 
Now, let's go on board with steerage. She slows down for the Delta. Yep, just as I thought. Pits. Oh, oh my god, Moronix! That's a big A drive through penalty to be served after the safety car by speeding under the safety car is given to Moronix. That is a kick in the teeth if I've ever seen one. Moronix going into the pits now, putting on his new tyres. JJ Hudson receives a five second time penalty for causing a severe collision with Top Notch. Possibly the pit lane. Going... It must have been in the pit lane. Look at that's Muggy's lost it massively. He has. Oh, is he still following under the. Oh, hang on! Oh! oh. He just cut JJ Hudson! He almost got oh. packed oh. 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 oh my close. god! He needed that! He could not afford to be stuck behind even one of them! Yes, he's stuck behind top notch, but heck, he could have been P5! But he's not, that was not an illegal move because as long as he passes them before they come out of the um, full extent of the pit lane exit, once they pass that line, you're not allowed to overtake them. But if you pass them before that, that's a, that's a legit move. That yeah, was that's illegal. perfectly executed. That's legal, so I'm not illegal. I'm numpty. Muddy, though, again, is looking like he could win this. Medium versus hearts. And these guys might have to pit again when the rain turns up. And if Muddy can keep up this pace and pressurise the leading cars, he might be looking good for the transition. Here we go. Lap 17 of 39. Steerage leads. And he's been leading since the beginning of the Grand Prix, followed by Moronix, who will have to go into the pits. And this will put him dead last, I imagine, to serve a drive through penalty. Which is very gutting for Moronix. Yeah, very. That means it'll hang notch in second, and Muddy still somehow finds himself in third. Maybe you think that the undercut didn't really pay off for him because of the safety car. I think Moronix so is sort of just enjoying the second place while it lasts. Because once he's yeah. in, he, that, this will probably be the last he sees of Steerage's gearbox. There you go, Easton. Um, let's, um, I'll let you go over the classification now from 17th to 1st on the drivers. A little recap while we're waiting for second yeah. to peel in. I'll just start from the top because it's 10 times easier. So P1 at the minute is Steve Genetic 7 and he's McLaren. P2 at the minute is RSF, RS Moronix and he's Mercedes, but you'll have to serve a drive through once a safety car pulls into the pit lane. P3 is RSF1, not Gen Alpha, Romeo. And P3, Muddy Biscuit. Been challenging second place that whole time, but finds himself then in P4 at the minute. P5 is JJ Hudson. And the record just kept it consistent. It's lucky he dropped from second to sixth due to this safety car. As the work to do in this last stint. P7 is Verstappen 08, just minding his own business this race. Finds himself up in P7 after being plumb last. P8 is Stygian in banana car. With banana cars, is that a banana race helmet? It's not, unfortunately. P9 Breezy 7272. He's tied to the back and somehow found himself in P9. Williams. P10 Titan Prime 9 in the house with hard tyres. P11 Jumper 84 in the second Ferrari car and some medium tyres. Then there's the toothpaste boys of Grunt and Weight of P12 and 13 respectively. P14 is, is Brutal Reapers in F Tari. P15 is Element Snow 7 in the Red Bull. P16 is RTF1 K Mag in the banana car on banana tyres. That's that banana racing helmet. We'll see. Um, 
be our character, we'll go back to that. And then something to rip on X one shot in the tracing point last of the runners. And uh, the three cars that have been um, out of the race is XFR Peanut, RSF1 Ewan and Braver Contain. Braver retiring on track, Ewan and Peanut crashing on track. Uh, this is a very difficult track to manage. The third safety car conditions that has been applied to this race when the fire has happened, even if there's a major incident, the game will not deploy another safety car. Safety car in this lap. We resume racing at lap 20 out of 39 and uh, we wait for uh, steerage to floor it. Moronix will probably want to serve this penalty immediately, uh, so he'll minimize the amount of damage he'll sustain. KMAG receives a five second time penalty for a collision with a promotion though. Moronix stays out, going through onto lap 20. Steerage leads with Moronix in second place, being followed by RSF1 Notch, Money Biscuit, JJ Hutton, Lukey, Verstappen, Stidgen, Breezy, Titan, Shrimper, Rutashafri, Wazer, Brutal Reapers, Element Snow, KMAG, and One Shot as they cross the line. And it looks like KMAG and One Shot uh, battle each other out going into Sandoval. And it looks like uh, Rip and One Shot stays ahead. And that was a very good move. 15 lap old hards versus four lap old mediums. And he got the move done still so very respectable work but it looks like K-Mag is getting back on to pressure the racing point and K-Mag moves up into 16th position well TV just off in the distance you can see off in the distance but probably second it's ready I'm gonna just get this Bava Crane from Ronnie's down to look here and then we'll get the gap Stedgen's looking to make the move and we're stopping Defending position, looking down in signal there, she came quite can do it. We are on real weakers. Real weakers make some move, Brandon's get where stories get damaged again. There's elements happening. Hey, Mag receives a three second time penalty for receiving multiple warnings. And Stigeon is probably going to try and make this move because he's got to get past this Ferrari. Otherwise, he's a sitting duck for Breezy and Titan just right behind. Waiter goes into the pits. Um, That's a five second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. And Stigeon's done it. Going up Beauvage. He takes the Stappen. And Stitchin moves into seventh place. What a move of Beau Rivage. And now Verstappen's being challenged by Breezy. Verstappen's got wing damage as well. That's not going to help his chances. Wears on the set of soft tyres now. The real question is when, this, when is this rain coming? Any moment now. Stitchin, however, a very nice move. Uh, you know, he did and got passed on Beau Rivage, a very tight area, but I still don't believe that's my overtake of the season uh, so far. It still belongs to Stroll back in Zandavon, uh, and that was a very good move back then. Verstappen receives a free second time penalty, receiving multiple warnings. Meanwhile, Muddy oh, Biscuit sorry. follows up behind. Oh, oh, this... oh Luki! He has only got minimal damage. Is in the pits, Verstappen's in the pits. Verstappen going in, what's he putting on? Those hards look like they have a served as long as they could go for. Breezy still needs very good work from him. Meanwhile, Muddy Biscuit. That's close to Girl Reapers. Was about to have a look on Grunt up Bull Rivage. But you see now he's going to have the run in those fresh or soft tyres. He's not going to quite look down into the memorable yet. Oh, into the lowest hairpin. And it looks like Brutal is still wanting to get past Grunt, but now everyone's gone onto the back of the Ferrari of Shrimper. And Shrimper is desperately trying to hold off that pack while trying to keep up with Titan. And looks oh. like we've got the battle for second place. Going into the Nova Chicane. And looks like Steer uh, looks like Muddy Biscuit, sorry. And Top Notch had a little bit of a battle there. And Top Notch stays ahead. I don't know what happened there, but that looked like a very good scrap. But I think the Hass has got damage. No, he hasn't. And that's let JJ Weezy's Hudson catch up. Breezy's all back to look here as well. So Breezy's been a bit of hell done here by Luffy because he's got a bit of damage. Luffy has as well peel off in the pit lane as well. Just for his oh, look back. Top notch. Oh, he's, oh look, he's retired in the pits. That's he's looking good. 
Yeah, I don't know what's up. Muddy has to get back. Notch is being held up severely muddy as the stage has just walked off in the distance again. For all we know, something might have happened with Luki and he had to he had to come off the race, you know, he had to come off, so hopefully everything's alright with uh, Luki in the Alpha Tauri. Um, but he will not be finishing the Grand Prix, which is a right shame. He was, he was doing very, very good. Uh, and that leaves us 16 cars uh, for the Grand Prix with the Stappen following in last. And it looks like Money Biscuits is going to make the move going into the Nova Chicane and Top Notch covers him off. I feel bad for Stedgem at the minute. He's just in his own world. No doubt around him. He's driving a bit himself. Rip level oh. to catch up to JJ. Chain brain at the wall. Like... <gasps> oh, that's not going to do any favours. Has he got damage? Oh, came out of the ground. It's one pull. Get major run damage. Oh, no. Not good. Shrimper moves up because Titan Prime now pits because of his damage. Yeah, I've got a five second time. Okay. Five. A five second time penalty is not what they need right now. Brutal Reapers getting out a little look and here's to it. The rain's here! The rain's arrived! <laughs> Here we this is go. where it gets juicy! As a famous scene from Star Wars, you know, as Anakin Skywalker said, yeah, here's where the fun begins, because. This is where the fun begins. And it looks like Money Biscuit into the no Bush Kane. He goes round the outside. He tries to cover him off top notch. And it looks like top notch shuts the door and keeps it going. Well, the rain's here. It's not quite enough though for the intermediate tyres because once the spray starts to appear, that's when it's um, deemed necessary to pit for the inters. So we've got to watch out for people making a mistake on pitting too soon on the intermediate tyres. And that could do wonders for everyone else in front. Oh, sorry, for anyone behind. So looking at the pits, no one has pitted. Stigin. Stigin passes. Breezy, Shrimper, they're next to pass the pit lane. No one's made the move yet. It's far too early to pit. As you said, Primus. They need to wait for the straight form because I got it too early. They'll just burn out, especially on track. Like Monaco, one mistake during a wall. Uh, from the F4 Japanese Grand Prix in Season 2, there was rain all the way through, but it was still slick conditions. So for all we know, the rain might not actually push us to intermediate conditions. It might just be rain, so the only issue will be greasy track surfaces. Yep. Oh, everyone's feeling it. Look at Element struggling catch up to Grunt Ashtrophy, not purely because of Grunt being faster, but just the wobble from how much the greasy track surface is setting him back. Is he going to maybe have a look at him? And he is. Here comes the element, always oh, looking to the inside of the Grunt defends that position very well. Grunt receives yeah, a penalty. <laughs> He's holding him up. Almost. Also, the rain started to fall right ahead to me because I was struggling. Top yeah, notch is in. Oh, K-Mag's been straight on the mirror Oh no, me... he's gone when Nico Rosberg went. It's still... DRS disabled. Oh my god, this could have shot steerage in the foot. Intermediate tyres. Muddy Biscuit gets in front of Top Notch in the pits. That's the rear edge steerage. He's got to struggle around the lap. And Muddy Biscuit could potentially be net lead because Steerage has just gone into Portier and Muddy Biscuit is bearing down with those intermediate tyres. He needs to get within about a 20 second pit window. So he needs to take 8 seconds out of Steerage before he hits the pit lane. Verstappen as well. Verstappen is struggling. Element Snow receives a five second time penalty for corner cutting. That's very harsh. Look at Steerage struggle going through to back. He has to tiptoe all the way through so he minimizes the um, time loss of being on the wrong tire at the wrong time. And uh, Muddy Biscuit has managed to cut down 1.8 seconds and is rapidly approaching because it looks like Steerage has just gone through Raskas into the pit lane. Muddy Biscuit, however, has just gone through the Novel Chicane. 
I don't think he'll have him unless it's a bad stop from Stevage. It looks all good. Fortunately, Steerage, he he's out on now onto the track, but he did lose time. So Muddy Biscuit will have the advantage of warmer tyres and will be able to catch up to the race leader. Steerage leaves the pits and the gap between the two of them is 5.2 no, 5 seconds is the gap between Steerage and Muddy Biscuit. Meanwhile, Stigin is now bearing down on Strimper. Verstappen finally pits onto some new intermediate tyres as well as K-Mag. And look how much the rain's now come. We thought this race was horrible in the dry conditions. Now they've got a wet Monaco Grand Prix. And oh, <laughs> I'm actually happy that, you know, this has happened because it spices up the Grand Prix, don't you think, Easton? Yep, very much. Because now what, the odds are solid. Been muddled up now. We still have to. Oh, mic disconnected. The issue is. It's like, yes, you can have good pace, but you need to stop the car from these wobbles because now these cars are optimised for a dry setup. And they're in the rain. These cars are well out of their comfort zone. Gap to leader at the moment. As it stands, 17 seconds separate JJ Hudson in fourth and Steerage in first. Stitching staying with Shrimper. He's doing very, very well. Paymag, three second time penalty. It's not very good for the Portuguese driver in last place. Stitching gets a nice little run there. Not quite close enough to get the move done. He actually lost a little bit of pace. Meanwhile, Brutal Reapers is actually pressuring Element Snow. Sorry about that. My head's not saying they couldn't bring the tractor. <laughs> no worries there. I heard you cut off there and I, I knew something happened. Um, but Brutal Reapers is trying to make the look up Beau Ravage, but can't seem to quite do it. Oh, a little bit at the back end there, a little stab there to recover the car and stop it from uh, going off. Good recovery from Brutal. Element is doing his absolute best to keep him behind him, but it looks like Brutal's just being very aggressive there with the throttle and a lot of like little twitches there, the back end kicking out on him. Oh, look at how much they're fighting the cars now. Stitching even closer through the tunnel. Jesus Christ, this is this is mental Eastern. I, I I've seen wet races, but like I've never seen drivers fight so much to stop their cars falling off the track, especially in the wet conditions. This is this is intense. Yeah, much harder, especially with no traction. Some of these guys do run no traction, it's even harder for them to try and keep that car in a straight line. A one shot, I another penalty. I don't think they've done like 34, as that's five, six laps away from the end. Sounds good. Meanwhile, steerage, even with the mishap of being on the hard tyre when the rain came down heavier, is actually opening the gap between himself and Muddy Biscuit. So, unless anything happens to steerage, Muddy Biscuit could be seeing uh, second place to the end. Same with Top Notch in third. The gap between Top Notch and JJ Hudson is quite good as well, so Top Notch is uh, doing pretty well managing the gap, but it's slowly decreasing, so something tells me something's happened to Top Notch. He doesn't look like he's picked up any, no, he's got no damage. He may just be struggling with his conditions, taking it easy, so he doesn't spin off or something. So I do the exact same. Okay, Mag's in the pits again, is this to retire or is he still winning? He's got a new wing on. Mm. Yeah, I think K-Mag's still going. I think he preferred to go to the end. If there's the event that there's another safety car, because there's only allowed, there's only one more allowed now. Another safety car comes out. It could 
potentially bring k back into contention, so he's hoping to ride well, it out as long as he can. Which one was it? Was it Breezy or Moronix the last wing? It looked like it was Breezy that lost some wing. Breezy's got... Yeah, he's lost the left end plate. And in these conditions, oh, he's now going to be... He's now going to be feeling that pressure. And we've got a crash up ahead in Mirabeau. I mean, that might be K-Mag actually going slow, letting faster cars go by, actually, not a crash. Moronix eager to get by uh, the wounded McLaren or Breezy, who was looking good with his strategy on the hard tyre, but the, like the wet conditions has done him no favours. As we're on lap 30 or 39. And a dry tunnel. That'll cause a Actually, couple that of problems. That'll overheat the tyres, won't it? Like, uh, it didn't also affect them massively because the tunnel's very dry, which means they grip. Oh! Stitching it. No damage, but he hit it. Brutal. It's still on Element Snow's back. Oh, we get to look around the outside. K Mag's in the pits again. And that's him who will tell him. Yeah, this time. This time K Mag is calling it a day uh, with uh, today's Monaco Grand Prix. Can't blame him. He, he tried his best. Multiple pit stops, but that is the end of uh, K Mag's session. Uh, let's see. How many times has people pitted? I want to see. There you go. Stops. K Mag pitted six times. Oh, Ooh, Brutal Reaper is pushing the car so much he actually nearly lost it all entirely. I think he's actually one of the no traction runners that you mentioned earlier. I definitely have no element of Moronix to do. run no traction, so it definitely be hard for them. <sighs> Stigeon just broke an end plate in the tunnel. Oof. He's now going to be feeling that. And that's going to bring Breezy back into contention for a good seventh place. Oh, and he's hitting the wall more. Stigeon is struggling. We've got a nice helicopter shot, though, of him battling the stripper. Has Hudson just picked up damage? He, ha he has! Time. Is the conditions heavier to warrant wet tyres? It doesn't look yet. This is a big gamble from Hudson. But that, the spray would be, need to be so much more intense that you could barely even see in front of you. I've been in Grand Prix where that's happened. I've been the witness one last season. F1 Germany. Monsoon conditions ain't fun. So I think JJ Hudson pitting there on the wet might have been the the big mistake that he could make. Yeah, look at him struggle. I, I don't think I don't think the wets were warranted just at that moment. I don't even think we're going to get even get into the heavier conditions. To it's a very difficult call in wet conditions, whether it's um, oh, it's oh, is that a safety car? On the gate. It's facing the wrong way. And that confirms our um, suspicion that it is not wet weather tyre weather one as of the moment. Well, don't you know that? It cuts it off and moves up in the field. Mm. Yeah, a Virtual VSC. safety car is deployed. Hudson crash JJ the Hudson. Tandem. Go on board quickly with the Ferrari. Oh, he's lost it coming out of the tunnel. Oh, that was close. Stitching pulls up. Stitching's on the wet. Oh, Stitching, that was a bit of a mistake. It's clear that JJ Hudson did not like the wet tyres. Uh, I don't it, think Stitching's going to benefit. Up. It doesn't look like, though, it's good enough for that. I mean, the rain is oh. heavy, but. We've just seen. We've just seen JJ Hudson crash coming out of the tunnel. 
has he made the right call? It does look heavier. The rain has picked up, but the spray doesn't look any different. But Stitchin is taking the gamble, but he has caught directly up to, uh, to rip him one shot and waited. So if Stitchin can cope on these tires, do remember these are dry setups, so everyone will struggle regardless if this is the correct tire or not. Time on a wet, is it, is it a crossover between them maybe? About showing the same pace? I think, I think now, this is where the game's now truly giving the math on, um, you know, the, the, the deltas really. I think it's a crossover. It is. Between them. Keep an eye on Moronix and Breezy and everyone else, if anyone's going to peel in to go onto the wets. No one else has. Stygian collect a penalty. But, but Stygian has to like to one shot. Well. I think this is wet tyre conditions. Have a little look at steerage, because he's in the lead, but he's not. Looking like he's doing too great. Struggling by the looks of it on those uh, oh, intermediate tracks. Helen's got too late in the zoo. And Tomas and he's hit the back of Ronix and skied off into the wall. Oh, and that's gonna. Look. Oh, and actually, Brutal Reapers has collected damage as well. He's got a broken end plate. The stap and pits onto the wet tires. Oh, and looks like Stitching actually got a little bit of a nudge there, trying to pass, ripping one shot going into the the lowest hairpin. I'll have a look at penalties quickly. Oh, yep. Have a little look at penalties. I, I forgot there's uh, five laps now to the end. Steerage has a warning. Are they? Has a warning. <coughs> Notch has a five second penalty that has been served. Run. Has two pe three penalties. Trimper has two penalties and two warnings. Breezy has two warnings. Moronix has a penalty. Ellen has a penalty. Little Reapers has three penalties and a warning. Trimper has Two penalties and two warnings. Stygian has two penalties and a warning. What about Wayne? One shot. I'm all jumbling about. They're all putting on. Waiter has three penalties. One shot. Has three penalties. Titan. The penalty. For staffing. Has two penalties, and the rest. Money's in. Look at the rain and pelting. Jesus Christ! The amount of standing water. Yeah, this is definitely wet weather conditions now. I think JJ might have just been a little bit too preemptive McClans in his decision. He just went flying off. The oh, he spun in the. Shine. Keep an eye out though for steerage however because he is now going to lose pace look how slow he's going through that hairpin i know it's the slowest corner in all of formula one but look how care and touch is not doing any better we have to keep an eye on muddy's pace compared to top notch how quick yeah look how close he's look how quick he's getting gaining on him they need to pit immediately Otherwise, Steerage and Top Notch could be saying goodbye to a Grand Prix victory. Well, as our rush we got a huge gap, almost 27 seconds. Steerage because he's going at quick enough pace. Steerage is going at a quick enough pace at the minute. Yeah, he's staying out. Steerage is going to take the risk. He's taking that gamble. But Muddy Biscuit is catching up to Top Notch and just that one lap he's made 2.9 uh, to 2.7 seconds and now he's just made that 3 seconds. 
And now... Oh, I only took one, oh. so I'm going damage. Oh. Oh, I'm on the wrong bit. I'm trying to score a drive. I'm going to an interval and gap to Oh, Trumper. And Breezy said by saying the tongue and Breezy picked up damage. And you say, oh, there's contact. Oh, and he hit the Ferrari. Luckily, Shrimper has um, managed to keep going, but Breezy uh, hitting the back of Shrimper and also collecting a five second time penalty. Look how much water there is on the track. This is bad. I think this is that monsoon weather you was talking about. Yeah, it's not fun while you're in a safety car. Breezy in the pits. I think we're all going to pit. Steerage is staying out. Meanwhile, Top Notch is now being pressured for second place. Muddy Biscuit on the wet is flying on those tyres. They're going to make the move in the middle. Oh, oh Muddy Biscuit loses a bit of control. And he's going to go down the inside of Top Notch. Top Notch is going to cover him off. Muddy Biscuit will have to wait his turn. Oh, but then Top Notch hits the wall. Muddy Biscuit into second place. And he's now clear as a whistle to uh, make the charge to catch up to Steerage. The question is, is there's only three laps to go, including this one. As Steerage crosses the line, immediately Muddy makes a second. That's going to come down to the wire because neither of these guys have pens. It's not going to pit. Oh, there's a Williams. There's Grunt. These other this tire runners are struggling massively. Yeah, in that one lap, Steerage has only about just reached the lowest hairpin. Muddy Biscuit has cut off nearly four, no, four seconds to the race leader, and the race leader is now approaching traffic. Trump just get past the element, go to back. Reapers just make contact, come up to the chicane, and now both of them have major damage. This is going to come down to the wire. When you say goes, he's going to make the move. Oh, Element's going to the pits. Stitcher's caught up to the back of Monix now as well. But can't make the move at the minute. Stitcher wants this. He's, he's right on the back of the Mercedes. And meanwhile, at the beginning of this lap, Money oh, Biscuit. Oh, he's done it. Stitcher's done it. He's caught Moronix on a mistake and struggling on the inters. This is definitely not into immediate conditions, but anyways, as I was saying, just going into um, the final corner, struggling like all hell, just uh, um, now finally beginning the final lap of the Grand Prix, and Muddy Biscuit has made seven, yeah, he's made 10 seconds on the race leader. If Muddy can keep this pace up and Steerage continues to struggle, the, the battle for the lead could oh, happen. I'm bored with Vage, but it only makes no run the outside. There's a grunt went round again at the Norvex again. Oh, final lap action, and Steerage is holding on for dear life. He has got those intermediate tyres that are not suitable for this heavy rain conditions. Muddy Biscuit has just made three more seconds on him, and Steerage has only just cleared Mirabeau. Oh, this, this we have to stay with these two because. It's any moment now where we could see possibly Steerage just hold on or Muddy Biscuit make the best call ever and make up 15 to 17 seconds in two laps and take the lead of the Monaco Grand Prix on the last lap. It looks like Steerage is just trickling out the Novel chicane. Muddy Biscuit just gets through into to back. He's only a corner behind him. Oh my god, I'm actually gonna have to say, if we've got to give anyone this, we've got to give Muddy Biscuit driver of the day. What a what a strategy call he made. The amount of time he was making up on steerage. And just as we approach the last corner, steerage, he leads from the start after a bit of a struggle, and he's held on on those intermediate tires. He wins the Monaco Grand Prix, and Muddy Biscuit follows up in second place. A very good push. He was he made. 17 seconds between Grant and Moronic here. Top notch crosses the line in third. Meanwhile, Stigeon is now just coming through Pinsnay. 
Oh, Grunt's went deep. That's Marmix's chance. Oh! Oh, Marmix's chance. Marmix's chance. Oh, Grunt's hit the wall and he's sustained damage. And Stitchin crosses the line fourth. Shrimper, he goes on to the final straight in the Ferrari. But meanwhile, we've got to stay on board with Grantastrophe and Moronix as this battle's going to the end. Shrimper goes fifth. Grantastrophe, he looks like he's going to just hold on and take sixth place. Moronix goes sixth because he had less penalties than, than him. Grantastrophe and Waiter are back to back. Bruce Reaper's ninth. Ripping one shot actually picks up the last um. championship point. <laughs> And we'll staff the album and breezy. Bam, Prime. The 11th. Breezy, 12th. Elm is running out of fuel and we'll staff the album. What a and Grand gone. Prix <laughs> that Oof. was. And drive the day. Waiter. Oh, it's been awarded to Waiter by the game because he made the most positions. The game may have awarded him driver of the day, but in terms of, uh, in my opinion, I think Muddy Biscuit really does deserve driver of the day because he he really did push, but just just misses out on the the win in Monaco. Who's your driver of the day, Easton? By the way, um, I would I would say Stevie just because he's led from start to finish. If Muddy had one more lap, it definitely would have had Stevage, but Stevage took the gamble. Steerage did hold on. Uh, yeah, Steerage did hold on quite well there. Uh, yeah, and also he led from start to finish, no damage, penalty free. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give that to Steerage. That was a, a very good drive from him. It was a bit boring for him, but then at the end it made it more interesting. But uh, yeah, you, if you invite Steerage, Muddy Biscuit, and Top Notch to the party, I'll go with the uh, classification for the race. So going from start to finish in first, Steerage takes the win. Uh, Muddy Biscuit second, Top Notch third, Stigeon gets fourth, Shrimper fifth, Moronic sixth, Grantastrophe seventh, Waiter eighth, Ru uh, Brutal Reapers ninth, uh, Wrong Shot in tenth, pick up the final championship point. Uh, Titan Prime 11th, Breezy 12th, Element Snow 13th, Verstappen 14th, JJ Hudson 15th, K-Mag 16th, Lukey 17th, Peanut 18th, Ewan 19th, and Braver Container rounds off the grid for the Monaco Grand Prix. And what a race that was. Um, and I don't know if Steerage has a microphone. I think I remember I had this issue back in Barcelona, so... Um, if you interview Top Notch, I'll interview Muddy Biscuit. Easton? Um, Dominic Heron actually since he's driven the dead by the game. Or... It's up to you. Uh, well, we've all... mm, Just to well, make up that. We've a... uh, Just to make up that third person, maybe. I mean, we have already kind of awarded it to Steerage. Uh, That's a so, but. We'll go with it. Uh, I mean, Waiter did make the most positions, which is very good, and it's a commendable effort. Uh, do you say that's worth giving him driver of the day then? I would say. I know we we're kind of into. Yeah, we'll leave it as steerage because it's a little yeah. bit hard to decide, but we'll, we'll just keep it as steerage. Anyways, uh, I'll let you interview Top Notch. So, Mr. Notch. I don't right. know what to really say. <laughs> it was just a chaotic race with obviously it being Monaco. Just walk us through your race. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my engineers and the party for helping me in the party. Yeah, qualifying weren't that good. Felt uh, under pressure really to get through all the time. I just scraped through into the top 10, I think it was. And yeah, a bit disappointed with my laps. A couple uh, places on the first lap of the race and uh, settled in a little bit. I, I, me and Stigian, I was up, I was behind Stigian for about, I don't know how many laps, man, but I was right on his gearbox and he was on, he must have been under some pressure, but he was driving really well, so hats off to him. And then, yeah, safety cars and I just found myself in a good position and just got to keep it clean. Yeah, it was a good race from you. It's just a shame that you obviously hit the wall, didn't know 
she came once Muddy Biscuit was passing you. Could you have stayed with him slightly? More or... What do you uh, think? I kind of knew once he was on them... I kind of knew that once he was on the wet, he was going to start catching me, but that was whether I could keep him behind. And uh, I did for a couple of laps, but yeah, he just had to run on me, and I kind of forgot my break and then more concentrated on him. And I lost my wing, but the boys said, don't really worry about it, you've, you've got enough space and you know, time penalties, so yeah, happy with that one. Yep, so obviously moving on next week, which I believe is Baku. How are you feeling for that? Done any practice actually driven the track in this game or what? No, I ain't, I ain't done any practice on it yet, but I do like it. I've won there in a league race before, so I, I tend to do well there and I tend to start building from there. So, yeah, more podiums, I think, for me. Yeah, I'm sure you get any question. Um... That's not. Uh, no, other than well done, top notch on a very difficult Grand Prix, uh, but a very well earned third place and muddy biscuit. We now move on to you in second place. I would like to have steerage near as well, but I don't think you have the microphone, so uh, I only have to have the two of you. But muddy biscuit, uh, well done on um, on your second place. If you had another lap, you might have had him. You might have had steerage. Um, yeah, I would have caught him, but it, whether I'd passed him, it would have been a different matter. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I got okay, six seconds so, in the last lap, so it would have been close. Sorry to interrupt, but um, going by the driver of the day, um, uh, it's been altered because uh, we're going by the decision of the game. So, uh, the game has awarded driver of the day. Uh, has been awarded to uh, RSF1 Waiter. Um, unfortunately, we were going to give it to you, but um, it's kind of a little bit of a problem with that, you know, the game. But So we have had to shift the decision of driver of the day to RSF1 Waiter. Um, you can invite him if you'd like, Easton. Um, so I'll, yeah. I'll leave that decision up to you. Um, um, anyways, Money Biscuit, yeah. You, you, you did good. You were struggling in third at a point... And then, um, but then when the wet conditions came, you um, you managed to actually really get some good pace going. But I know you're a little bit guarded, missing out on the wind just just the last moment. Yeah, but I still, think, mate. Uh, yeah. Very yeah, impressive a, pace. That bit of a bad start, dropped down to third, and got to behind Luke in the first stint and Notch in the second stint after the safety car. So to come out with second place, I'm happy with that. Yeah, I've done whatever. I just had more downforce, so I didn't have the top speed to get past. But yeah, after against like Pine drives for like 30 laps to be able to, I know he not ran wide a bit, but to make a move on not just to get second place, that I felt good. And I mean, like, how difficult was this rain? Because you went to intermediates, and that was a little bit of a challenge. But then when you went to full wets. I imagine that was even more difficult, you know, because you're on dry setups. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it actually was pretty worse on those last two laps on inter before I changed over to wets, because the wets, once you're in the wet conditions, it wasn't actually too bad. But yeah, those last two laps on inters, I think I was probably not even getting to full throttle until about fifth or sixth gear. I was lifting in the tunnel, lifting up the hill before the second corner. So yeah, I was definitely struggling, just didn't want to make any contact with the wall because I knew if I then pitted for wets and had to do a front wing change, I probably wouldn't have caught to get second place to uh, had to sort of take it carefully and it came out well in the end. Right, so Easton, do you have any questions uh, for Muddy Biscuit before we um, wrap up? Uh, actually, no, before we interview, sorry, RSF on Waiter uh, on Driver of the Day. Um, do you have any questions for Muddy Biscuit? Um, yeah, I've got the same one from Notch. So, moving on to back and next, done any practice on the track? I actually driven it on this game or what? I don't think I have actually, but last season I won the F3 race, so hopefully I can continue that form over to this season. I've always liked Baku, so hopefully a second street race in the valley would be good. That's good to hear, and proud to want to do. Do you have the day of wait or do you want me to do it? Uh, I'll do it. Um, okay, waiter. 
Oh, yeah, sorry, press the wrong button. Waiter, welcome to the comms box uh, and uh, the podium. Uh, obviously, you didn't achieve a podium position, but you've been awarded driver of the day uh, by the game, and um, it looked like it was a bit of a difficult one for you uh, today. Uh, tell us how your race has been like for you, because there was a lot of things happening, and we couldn't really tell you know, who's going to be making an overtake or who's sticking behind. Um, how's this Grand Prix been for you, mate? Awful. This whole evening has been awful. <laughs> <laughs> my, my worst my worst qualifying oh. in this league, and I think for like a long time, just couldn't hit a couple up together. I was I was in a party with uh, Brutal Reapers, Grontastrophe, Moronix, and Grunt was like 13th, Brutal 15th, and I was 17th, who we were like... Yeah, that, that party was actually pretty good because it relax me a little bit because we were just, just sniggering at certain things and how the race was just mad. Uh, I've, I've watched my highlights back. You know, you go to theatre and it captures your highlights. Literally every highlight is the times I got damage. So... <laughs> oh, I, I don't... No idea how I've got eight. No idea. Just... Quite a lot of people in front of you did collect a load of penalties, so uh, you did jump quite a few positions uh, due to their penalties. Uh, quite a few had five second penalties um, that they served in the pits when the rain came. It was more or less just the corner cutting, and uh, there's actually quite a few five second time penalties implied to people because they cut corners, which is quite harsh, but that's the game for you. Uh, but yeah. Um, it was unexpected for you to get the driver today, but regardless, uh, uh, you've got it now. It's the first time you've actually managed to hop into the party of us uh, this season. And I've got fastest lap. Hopefully. And fastest lap as well, so that's an extra point in the bag, so well done on that. Yay. Um, Canada. Um, okay. A question for all three of you. Um, we'll start off with our driver today. Uh, um. Waiter. You won last year in Canada. Oh, Baku, last, that? It's Baku next. I'm... Oh, Baku, is it? <laughs> Baku next. I'm so used to Canada. Yeah. Always been Monaco, then Canada. Baku. Um, Are you feeling good for Baku? Right. Base, basically, I'm going for the win. Nothing less. Ooh. From the way from the way I started this this season, I thought I was hoping for like a lot more solid point scoring. I've scored points, which is good, but I haven't been on the podium once. And uh, you know, back Baku and Canada is the two races I'm looking forward to because that's I know my way around it pace wise from last game into this game. I think hasn't changed that much. I think I'm still up there, so. As long as I can hook it together, have a good strategy, good, you know. Plus, I love Baku, so looking forward to it. Right, you um, top notch. Yeah, I like it. I've always liked that track. Um, I personally think it's just a war of attrition. You've got to make it the end cleanly, so that's that's my aim and where I end up. Hopefully, in the points, I'll be happy with that. Isn't not as bad as Monaco in that regard. They're both difficult street circuits, but I think uh, Baku's a little bit more forgiving in terms of overtakes. Yeah, you can push the boundaries a little bit. And finally, Muddy Biscuit. Um, how are you feeling for Baku? Uh, I'm feeling good. I like Baku. It's a good track, but yeah, it's about keeping it off the barriers, and I think anyone who can keep it off the barriers should be in for some strong points finishes. Right, yo, um, that has been it. Uh, that was a very interesting session, Easton. Uh, it's yeah. definitely one of the most interesting Monaco Grand Prix I've ever seen, especially the fact that dry start, good strategies playing out, and then the rain came a lot earlier than I thought it would be. I thought it was more near on to the end when the Inters would come into play, but yeah, regardless, that was good, didn't it? Uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, n never mind there. Um, 
Anyways, I'd like to thank Easton for stepping in for uh, Vettel today. He wasn't able to make it, but uh, I'd like to thank Easton for stepping in. Uh, so that has been the Monaco Grand Prix. So to go with the recap for the um, positions, uh, driver today was awarded to RSF1 Waiter for, from finishing 8th uh, place after starting 16th. Uh, third place is uh, to Top Notch, second to Muddy Biscuit, and a second consecutive race win to Steerage in the McLaren. This could be a, a good point for him to make up points. I think he actually leads the championship now. I call hacks. <laughs> uh, he, he did very good, like even in yeah, the worst I'm not conditions. The only time we saw him, after we saw him lose pace, and he blew you away at that uh, one and nine one. <laughs> More than Bull and Ellie. Right. It's like, I surprised you because that was faster than you. <laughs> Which is yep. pretty good pace from an F2 driver. Uh, but yeah, anyways, thank you very much, everyone. That has been uh, F2 this week. If you want to see more F2 action, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait until next Sunday uh, in Baku at 8 pm if you want to see uh, more F2 action. However, if you want to see um, more Monaco action, Tomorrow at 8 p.m., you'll be seeing the F3 division uh, duke it out. Uh, and it will be a very interesting... Well, all week is going to be interesting for the Monaco Grand Prix. So if you want to see more of that action, please tune in tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. And we will see you in the next one. So please take care. And uh, yeah, have a good evening. Wash your hands. Wash your hands.